Canada, they picked up this fella and went up there and said, right in amongst a bunch of Norwegians, and he said, uh, the Lord tells me that somebody in Europe, a crowd about ten times this size, somebody by the name of John, maybe it's Johannes, Joanne, said, right along in here, I believe, he said, no, uh, said, it's right along in here somewhere, of course he took him out. In a Norwegian country, Everybody, 90% of them is Petersons, Carlsons, John, Johannes, and well, certainly, see, certainly it's got to get in there somewhere. Then the Lord tells me somebody's got back trouble. I feel my back hurting. Anybody that's been raised by the Scripture knows that that's psychology. That's certainly it. But see, what did it do? Then the man was picked up right there by the... The FBI from here sent up there and picked him up up there. The Royal Mounted Police and the Ministerial Association come to me and a homosexual. They say, well, Brother Bram's probably the same thing. That's the way it runs, see? What is it doing? To give the trumpet an uncertain sound, see? Just exactly. There was with that group that went to Europe. A Christian pro gospel businessman identified with them named Ferry von Blomberg. Even the name is typical Ferry. And uh, not trying to be facetious, but look at it, it's absolutely true. That was his name, and he was an avowed homosexual. And at the same time, Leo and Jean, two homosexuals, attached themselves to Brother Branham's ministry as kid boys, which was allowed by God. Brother Gold here, a precious boy. Sometimes someone says, Why, what's the success of your service, Brother Branham? Of course it's Christ. How do you hold up so and just keep going night after night? My boy, the, the people are with me. Then you come to find out I had somebody giving out prayer cards that they offered him, somebody offered him $500 to put his wife in the front row so he'd be sure to get in there. Well, I had to watch that. That's just where the magazines and newspapers are waiting for, that one thing to criticize. So I got my son to come with me. I've got two trusted boys here, Mr. Mercer and Mr. Gold. And I know that they would never do a thing like that. Uh, and may, by the way, Mr. Mercer and many of them are going to take some of these old prophecies and dig them out and revise them a little or bring them up to date uh, and put them in papers. time I seen Brother Branham was 1947. And I knew that that was God. Et de la première fois qu'il a vu Frère Branham, c'était 1946, 47, 47, et qu'il a su que c'était Dieu lui-même. And uh, uh, I I came to his place in 1955, and I talked to him for 20 minutes, and he said, "You're sleeping under my bed tonight." Et dit, je, et dit qu'il allait le voir dans sa maison en 1955, ouais. Yeah. Et, et, et dit, et dit, et dit, il a parlé pendant 20 minutes, il y a dit 7 minutes, tu dors dans mon lit. And who sleeps in his bed? Et dit, dans cette, qui, 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 qui dort dans sa qui, qui, dort dans, qui dort dans son lit, c'est sa femme, c'est son épouse. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, he'd take me swore upon and he'd discuss things that he didn't discuss otherwise and, and I don't discuss them because if he hadn't have held it back, I could, but I can't. Sure, sure I mm -hmm. But uh, one day he said, let's go down to your dad's squirrel hunting. I said, okay. Uh, well, we went down there. He said, we'll hunt tomorrow, and then we'll stay all night and hunt the next day. And I said, okay. And we got there, and uh, he said, now, uh, I saw a pile of hay out in the barn. He said, 
you and me will just sleep out there. <laughs> and my mother found out about it. Well, <laughs> she said, you're not sleeping in the barn here. You're going to sleep in my bed. <laughs> well, that was the first time that I had the opportunity of sleeping with him.